Hey designers, I'm going to show you how you can allow your users to choose an avatar in your storyline projects. Here's what I'll show you. This is the finished product here. Uh, your users are on the choose your character screen. They can choose to be the coyote, the cactus, or the quail. On succeeding screens, they'll see their choice and their choice only, and that'll be their avatar to guide them throughout the entire project. So I'll show you how you can set up this screen so that your users can choose or re-choose their avatar. And I'll show you how to set up the graphic on the succeeding slides so that only the avatar of their choice will be displayed. Spoiler, this is going to take a variable and it is going to take a few triggers and we'll use states as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. Here we are in my dummy project. I've gone ahead and reset everything so we can work through this together. So I've got the editing mode set up in Storyline. I have the slide set up where my users are going to choose their character. I've already pulled the clip art for the coyote, the cactus, and the quail. They look basically how I want them to look. And I've already got the next slide kind of basically set up as well, which is where their avatar will display. We can make sure everything is working. Okay. So right now I've only got the base slide here. I need to do a few things. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to select each of these three characters here. I'm gonna copy them and I'm gonna create three layers. I'm gonna create one layer for each possible avatar that can be selected. So I'm gonna name them accordingly. I'm gonna name them Coyote. I'm gonna name them Cactus. I'm going to name them quail. Okay. So the idea is what I'm going to have this do is that when they click on the avatar of their choice, it's going to bring up a specific layer that's going to show that their avatar is selected. So I'm going to start building this out. I already copied the characters. The avatar is here. I'm going to paste them on screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set these up so that they have a shape effect that they are going to glow so that it's super clear that they are selected. So it's always really good to have that immediate feedback for your user. So if they select something, they know that it's selected. Okay, so obviously this is just the coyote uh, layer. We don't need to have all three. We just wanna see the coyote selected on this layer. So I'm gonna cut these two and I'm going to paste them onto their own succeeding slides here. I like just kind of doing everything at once and then just pasting uh, wherever else I need it. I try to save myself work wherever possible. So now I've got my three layers set up, coyote, cactus, and quail. And you can see that it shows the avatar is selected. All right, so I wanna right click on my layer, look at its properties. I wanna make sure that hide other slide layers is selected and hide object in the base layer is not selected. Basically that nothing else is selected. This is the only box that I want checked. So the idea is that they can choose one, change their mind, choose another one. It's gonna change those other slide layers. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up an, av uh, an avatar variable. So I'm going to go into the little variables window here add a new variable. I'm going to name this one avatar. I'm going to leave it on text. Um, I am going to make the default value coyote. And I want there to be a default value so that if anything glitches in this project, there's always going to be some sort of avatar on screen. I'm just kind of hedging my bets and trying to prevent any, any glitches from happening. So Coyote is going to be the default in this project, but that'll change depending on what the, or the user chooses. So on each of these layers now, I'm going to have the uh, variable be set to whatever is selected on screen. So I'm going to put this onto each layer rather than the main slide to keep it really nice and neat. So let me set up this trigger. I'm going to, let's see, this is falling off my window here. I want to adjust the variable. I uh, know there it is. Uh, avatar to value coyote when the timeline starts on this layer. Okay, so just variable, set avatar. That's a variable we just set up to value coyote. When timeline starts on this layer, this is the coyote layer. I'm going to copy this. I'm gonna paste it to the cactus layer. And here I'm gonna set it to cactus instead. 
and I'm going to paste it to the quail layer. And of course I'll change that to quail. So now when my user is choosing a character, it brings up that layer. It's going to automatically set that variable to the character they've chosen. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up the triggers that will open up the layer when the user clicks on each character. And again, the layers are basically invisible to the um, user. I'll show you what I mean. They don't know they're opening up a layer. They just feel like they're selecting a character. So let me show layer uh, coyote when user clicks on coyote, okay? So again, I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it onto the cactus. But I'm gonna have them open up the layer cactus instead. I really love the copy and paste options and storyline. It can save you so much time if you're smart about how you use it. So that should be working. And one more thing before I test this out in the preview mode, I'm going to insert a text box here just temporarily um, that's going to show us the value of the avatar variable. So let me make this a little bit easier to see. Um, what I'm going to do is go here to, I believe it's insert reference to avatar. That's A is at the very top, so I'll put that in there. Um, oops, it took out my other stuff. Avatar. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that. So avatar colon avatar. <laughs> this is going to show us what the current value is of the variable. So as we test this out, we can make sure we did it correctly. So let me go ahead and I want to preview just this slide. Okay, so you can see when the, the slide opens, the default value of the avatar variable is coyote, just like I set it up. As I click on coyote, of course it stays at coyote. Click on cactus, it changes to cactus. I click on quail, it changes to quail. So you can see the effect I've created here is that I've used layers to allow the user to select a character and reselect a character. That's because we have hide other slide layers set up so that as they choose a character, the variable adjusts and they can see their selection appear on screen. So that is set up and that is working. So I can go ahead and I just move this off screen. Sometimes I, I just leave the stuff off screen for in case I want to use it later. When you publish this, this will not appear on screen. Okay, so I've got this correctly set up, the variable set up so they can choose their avatar. Now here's the interesting part. This is where their avatar will actually appear on screen. I've gone ahead and already set up the graphic. I'll show you what I did and then we'll set up the triggers together. So here's my little coyote. Just to save some time, I went ahead and already set up its states. The easiest way to allow your user to choose an avatar is to set it up as states for a graphic. So what I did was I put the coyote in here. I left the coyote as the normal state, which is always the default state for a, an, a graphic in Storyline. And I added two new states. I named one quail. I named one cactus. And then in quail, I took out the, the coyote. You can just delete it. Delete it. There could be nothing there at all, for instance. And I pasted in my quail graphic. Same thing for cactus. I deleted the coyote and added in the cactus. That's actually the really fun secret of states is your state for any given item. You can actually delete the original thing and put in something totally different. You can use this trick for all sorts of um, fun effects and storyline besides creating an avatar. So that's that. The, the coyote state is normal, quail, cactus, they're named accordingly. So what we're gonna do next is um, again, my default value for the avatar variable was coyote and coyote is the default normal state for this graphic. So I don't really have to worry about anything there. Um, what I'm gonna do though is work on my triggers. What I want to happen is I want this coyote graphic to change to quail if quail is selected and cactus if cactus is selected. So I'm gonna change state of, and I named this in the, um, Timeline. It always really helps if you name things in your timeline so you know exactly what you're working with in your triggers. I already named that to avatar because that's going to be the avatar and I can reuse that throughout the entire project. I'm going to change state of avatar uh, to normal. When the timeline starts on this slide, I always like to do on this slide, if avatar equals coyote. Make sure you don't have any typos there so you can make sure it works. So that's just going to be the default. This is probably redundant. I don't really need this trigger, but it kind of helps me keep my mind in order. All right, I'm going to copy, paste, and I'm going to change state to cactus when timeline starts on this slide if avatar equals cactus. 
I'm going to paste that. Actually, I'm going to copy this, paste that one more time. Change if avatar to quail when timeline starts on this slide, if avatar equals quail. All right. So that should be that. I will have to preview this section to make sure that it is working. So let's go ahead and hit preview and see if everything is working here. I'm going to preview this entire scene. Give me just a sec. All right, let's go. Pop in my name. Got another video to show you how to set this up if you want to do that. Uh, so I can see that my selection is working. Say I want it to be cactus. Oh, my button's getting tweaky. It changed to cactus. All right, say I want to go back, change to quail. You can see I go forward and it's a quail. Last but not least, if I want it to be coyote, it's the coyote. That's it. It's actually pretty easy. It's just one variable. It's a few triggers. You can do a lot of copying and pasting. And now what you can actually do is um, you can copy this graphic to reuse it elsewhere in your project. So say I wanted to do a, um, a new slide down below. I can paste this guy on screen. I have to double check the states, make sure they're correct. They are. And then what I can do is actually copy or select all three of these triggers, copy them, and then uh, paste them into the slide. I will have to, I guess, um, fix this and make sure that it works. I'll be a little bit tedious, um, but it's it's pretty quick to set up. So you just copy the graphic and copy the triggers as well and set that up wherever you want to set that up throughout your entire project. Whenever you copy graphic, the states do uh, copy along as well. And you can hover over those and um, see those and make sure that they are correct. All right. It's as easy as that. Thanks for watching along. Please check the show notes for resources, including uh, an example of this product that you can download and try out yourself. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I hope you have fun trying this out yourself.